Hi, Kevin. Hi, Alicia. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm, ha I'm happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you, too. Uh. So uh, Shakespeare in the Courts is a very evocative name for the organization. And I wonder if you would let us know how, whose brilliant idea was this to bring a Shakespeare program to kids in trouble who are in the court system? Uh, it's, it, it has kind of a, uh, 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 a lengthy beginning. Mm. Uh, uh, the years, years ago, when we started uh, doing residencies in high schools. Uh, the first one, the first big one we did was at Lenox High. And the principal there, uh, Paul Paracci, was a basketball coach who became the principal. And he invited us in because a, a drama teacher quit in the middle of uh, uh, this rehearsal period. So <laughs> Tina threw me under the bus and said, you have to go in and direct a musical. I don't know anything about musicals. So I said, I'd be happy to come in, but can it be Shakespeare? And Paul was desperate. So he said, sure, whatever, you know, leave me alone. <laughs> oh no. So we started this project, this, this, this high school project of doing Shakespeare. And at the end of it, the kids clamored to do it again. I mean, we had sword fights in it. We had dances. So we had scenes. We had comic scenes, tragic scenes. We, we had everything. Yeah. And they clamored to do it. So then every year we started doing a Shakespeare program. Well, after about three or four years of this, the principal, Paul, came to us and said, this is great. This is great. This is uh, this is, he was surprised at how uh, impactful this was in their lives. He said, he was saying things like, they're participating in class more. They seem much more confident. They speak up. They are kind, they say hello to the custodians in the hallway. Wow. So we developed this whole ethic and aesthetic for working on Shakespeare as a collaborative, cooperative, humane learning experience so we'd have like three romeos and three juliets there was no stars it was about a, an educational experience but a deep and rigorous one so soon after that uh paul you know went to night school became a lawyer and then he got appointed the first juvenile court judge in berkshire county Oh, About a week gosh. after he was appointed to judge, he, he called up. This is like a whole week, you know, for him to get his sea legs. He called up and said, you know, that Shakespeare project we do with, could we do that with the court kids? Because I'm seeing a lot of court kids and I know how much this would benefit them. So mm -hmm. could you cook up some kind of program to do with the court kids? That, thought, that's visionary holy that's cow. that's how it that's how it started it was oh i God. i have to say it was really paul paracci the juvenile judge his idea and he had to really campaign he had to campaign with the uh probation officers he had to campaign with the other judges and it took some convincing and it took us a, honestly a couple years you know thinking through talking with Paul, meeting with people to create a model. And the first model didn't work. It was 12 weeks, it was twice a week. Uh, and we abandoned that soon after because you couldn't maintain it only doing two days a week. It, you know, it, it kind of, they'd get excited and then the energy dropped down. They get excited and dropped. So then we changed it to four days a week for six or seven weeks, much more intense. and that became the program. And we cut the plays because you, you always cut Shakespeare plays. I mean, Hamlet's like four hours long. You have to yeah, cut yeah, these plays. yeah. But, uh, and we did everything we would do with the high school kids. We, you know, we had dances, we had songs. These, this is risky business for some of these kids with sword fights. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, for some of these kids that, you know, schlump in their chair and they do a lot of uh, posturing and uh, are inarticulate. Uh, so this was this was a, a, a big risk for them. So over the years, we developed, you know, lots of strategies for working with uh, high school students. But this was the most challenging because we were hitting um, kind of the most resistance and the greatest need, right. the greatest need for them to have an experience of uh, a more positive experience of working with their peers, of caring about their peers, of beginning to use language to reveal rather than conceal themselves. Right. That's it's a, a whole very other way of using thing. language. Yeah. Um, and, you know, after doing it for years, I, I want, I've, I've had a couple thoughts about it. And, and one is, you know, Shakespeare is the excuse. Right. And Shakespeare gives them this wildly challenging, but hugely rewarding experience but you really need to go at it with baby steps honestly it's like yeah. it's like the horse whisperer you know the <laughs> when, you're, when you're learning something new the slow way is the fast way right so it's you know bit by i mean we can get them to do anything if you put in enough baby steps along the way funders always ask does this fix them? Oh God. And 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 then I'll say, no, no, it's not about that. And Paul, the the judge will say the same thing. He says, no, it doesn't fix them. But then picking up trash on the road doesn't fix them. Spending time in jail doesn't fix them. This doesn't fix them. But what happens is over the course of it, they change. Yeah. Change happens. And I can tell you about a thousand stories of change that's happened to these kids. Uh, do they still get in trouble? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But I think they don't get in trouble as often. And they don't, they don't get in trouble to the extent that they did before, because something has changed in them as they do this process. And I've and I've always thought that, you know, we we're, we're Shakespeare and company, so we think, you know, they're really liking Shakespeare. They're falling in love with Shakespeare. That's not true at all. In doing this, what they're doing is they're they're I would say exaggeratedly, they're falling in love with themselves. Yes, yes. they see something new about themselves that they admire, that they want to keep. Yeah. And it's fragile and it takes a lot of support. And, you know, their brains are still developing. Of course, they're going to make horrible judgments and mistakes, but they see something in themselves that they never saw before and they start to like it. And that can grow, that yes. can build. And they start caring about each other. Uh, that's the I, program. <laughs> that's I the blame program. it all on Paul Paracci. <laughs> in, in one way, that's the program. But in another way, um, in another way, there are elements of the program that uh, when I did the actors training, I think I got some of those elements and I, I steal with credit. <laughs> And, and use them in, in our trauma workshops that we do. But I, I wonder, you know, some of that community building stuff you do is the stuff that makes it safe to be relational with the people that you're around. And, and, and I think that even if you don't manualize them, those are skills that you take away that become a, a subconscious practice for how you approach other people and approach new situations. And I know that these kids are so filled with shame that the only thing oh. that they can do, the only thing they can do is 
act like they don't care. And, and so, so what you're doing is making it safe for them to not act like they don't care. So I, I think I think so. I think yeah. so. And it's 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 like learning how to walk. Mm -hmm. And you learn how to walk by falling down. Well, they've done an awful lot of falling before they get to you. An awful uh, an awful lot. So it's a gradual process. You yeah, yeah. You, you you have to you know we know it works. Yeah. It's 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 a question of the the teachers how they show up in the room. Uh, uh, they have to leave their ego at the door because it's just too uh, confronting. You know when when they're when their first response so often is you know fuck you I'm not yeah. going to do that. Yeah, you, you can't make me do that. I'm not doing uh -huh. that. That's uh -huh. stupid. That's stupid. And stupid means you're going to shame me and I'm not going to let you shame me. Yeah. 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 Stupid yeah. means I'm a, I'm afraid. Right. Right. Most often. Right. Yeah. So you, you, you kind of have to hear the underlying uh, reason for what they're saying and not hear what they're saying quite so uh, impactfully. Yeah. 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 There's just so many times you can hear, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing, I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. That's stupid. I'm not doing that. No, no. <laughs> I mean, that's really, it's really disheartening. Well, well, I, I, at this point, you must have heard it so many times that it's part of the program. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so the, I think, I think, sorry, go ahead. So how are kids selected to be part of the program? Uh, the judge. Uh, the judge, all the judges know of the program and they, they come to the performances at the end and they uh, give a certificate which uh, completes their obligation to the court. Doing this program resolves that and they get a certificate and the judge makes much of them. But more importantly, when they're performing in front of an audience, the audience cheers yeah and laughs yeah and claps and this is water on their desert they they've not they've not had this experience yeah. yeah and at the end of it it's been our experience that i i can't say it's a hundred percent it's 99 point something they all want to do it again yeah. can we do this again can we do this again and I always say, absolutely. Just you know, set a car on fire, throw a rock through a window. We'll do. We'll do you'll do it again. So, kids do something like set a car on fire, and they <laughs> they show up before the judge. And this, how does the judge decide who gets to go to Shakespeare? Uh, it's not. It's an because the judge, the juvenile court judges here are extraordinary. Mm -hmm. They are real advocates for the kids. They take an interest in the kids. They want to know about their environment, their background, their experience, why they got kicked out of school. Uh, not just that they did, but what, what happened? What mm -hmm. happened? What did the teacher say to you? What did you do? What did the teacher? And the probation people, I, I mean, will they will just go to the moon for these kids. Mm. They're, they're real advocates as well. So between the probation and the judges, their rec and they don't recommend everyone, their recommendations, they're the ones that go into the program. We, it's our program. Uh, and in a sense, we work with them. We don't work for them. It's our program in so many ways we make the decisions and we're we're not the uh the probation officers enforce the rules we don't get involved in enforcing the rules so we're not wearing two hats of so what what are the rules uh you have to be on time 
you have to be, uh, you, if you don't show up, you're kicked out of the program and you start back at square one. Uh, if you're uh, create uh, uh, any kind of acting out violence, violence in the rehearsal room, uh, you appear before the judge. It doesn't mean you, you're, I mean, it's not the Garden of Eden model. If you, you, know, you mess up once, you're out forever. It's you appear in front of the judge and then the judge goes into it a little more deeply, like what's going on with you? Why, why is this happening? And we'll put them back in it if, if we agree to them being back in it. So they're, they're, the, they're the ones who enforce the rules. So we don't have to wear that hat. We're just the directors of the, of the show, the choreographers, the facilitators. We're not the police. And, and yet what you're providing is a powerful therapeutic experience and where they encounter themselves. So a little bit more about how theater exercises make that happen. From my experience with you in workshops, I know that you are gifted in making people feel safe and countering uncomfortable sensations within themselves. And I know that the theater exercises are part of that, but it's also the quality of attention that you have that is the container. Sure. Uh, as just in terms of the structure, uh, four days a week, it starts with two hours, then two and a half, then three hours, and then finally all day for three days, right at the very end, to put costumes and the lights and the set and all of those technical elements together. And then a public performance and the theater is, is jam. Yeah. I mean, it's packed. People are standing. But yeah. we're, we very wisely did their schedule their performance while there's a 60 actor workshop happening at the same time. So you have all these participants who are doing all this actor training, who are breathing and their feelings are all over the place and they come and watch this performance and they just, they weep and applaud. And yeah. this is, yeah. I mean, it's really rain on their desert for the kids yeah, yeah uh so four days a week uh the ratio is we'll do usually our we prefer to do three uh three students three of the kids to one uh director teacher uh we've done as many as four but three is really more more effective two is not enough yeah. you know then you're kind of on the spot all the time if there's just two of you and a director uh and we start with check-in. We sit in a circle and everyone goes around and uh, says what they need to say, whatever's on their mind. What is it that brings them into the room so they can kind of focus on being in the room? So at the beginning, there's a lot of pass, pass, chill, pass, nothing. And gradually that changes as well. Yeah. Yeah. So then we start with some kind of physical activity. <clears throat> And the physical activity is, you know, you just start with shaking your hand and then it goes into your arm and then the other hand. So baby steps. And yeah. by the end of a physical warm up, and the vocal warm up is the really threatening one. You know, as oh, soon as you weird. start, yeah. as soon as you start making loud sounds, well, you're you're being revealed, you're you're being stupid. It's, oh yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. People really see you when you make a sound. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And if their habit is being inarticulate, uh, not saying anything, and just going into resentment and resignation or hopelessness, or when they do say something, the language they use is primarily judgmental language. This is stupid. I'm no, no. Fuck you. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not, it's, it's a specific kind of language, what I, which I call judgmental language. Yeah. That keeps them trapped. 
they can't they kind of can't shift uh their image of themselves uh how they're participating trying something new so dangerous right. and the judgmental language keeps them protected <clears throat> so if you can gradually shift that kind of language and shakespeare you know is is full of non-judgmental language it's language of images it's language of feelings it's language of complex thoughts right it's, it's language of belief and hope uh sure there's judgmental language in it but their language is pretty much exclusively judgmental and this gives them a different experience of language and some of the languages is is well it's as we know it's really it's really beautiful it's compelling language it sticks in your mind because it's so uh it has such teeth yeah. or it has such beauty and you hear them say oh wow is that is that where that phrase is that where that comes from that that expression i'm i'm familiar with that's from shakespeare yeah we go yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then after check in after a physical vocal warm up then we'll 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 play some kind of game we just want to get some energy up in the room if there's no energy in the room you, you kind of your imagination doesn't even start firing yeah your your creativity won't even wake up until there's more energy in your body so we'll play some playful game and it, by playful i don't mean you know infantilizing it's not a silly game. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a playful game that, if they're not responding to it, will shift gears and will play a different game. So we need to stay flexible. But we have a lot of games that pretty much engage them if we take baby steps. Then after that, we give them bite-sized chunks of text, and we'll go through the text uh we'll break up into smaller groups we'll go through the text they'll have them read that it's usually each of them gets one or two monologues that's so, that's a lot yeah yeah one or two monologues so everyone plays hamlet you know everyone plays henry the fifth uh and then we'll give them like a two-person scene or a three-person scene and one or two of those and then we'll give them a group scene like a dance or a, a sword fight a battle scene um and then a song or something so each of them has a, a kind of a wide range of material that they're working on and they'll respond to some more easily uh more um uh, authentically than others and yeah. then uh we'll give them more of that if they like a song we'll give them two songs or three songs it it depends you know it, it's about what engages them and nurturing that and the pleasure that they find by the end of the rehearsal period uh and we have snacks because they come in voraciously hungry for so first thing we do is make sure there's food before they do anything else there's mm -hmm. there's something for them to eat uh and then we start chucking so but by the end of the rehearsal uh session uh i mean they're running around the room they're laughing mm -hmm. they are talking with each other about you know other and inappropriate things but they're like talking with each other and they talk to more and more they start talking to other people in the group not just you know the one person they they feel tight with yeah. um, and then at the end there's a, a reinforcement where we sit again we sit in a circle and we end on time that's part of the deal we start on time we end on time so they can count on that uh, we do uh, a reinforcement where they get to uh express gratitude or praise someone or uh uh say 
I really liked this moment or this was fun. Can we do more of these? I really like this. So it's, it ends intentionally of all the things you could say at the end of rehearsal. It's what are one or two of the positive things you can say to reinforce it. So it ends on an upbeat, positive note. And that's how you leave the room. Mm -hmm. And then they're, they're, by the end of it, they're bouncing around the room. They're laughing. Uh, they're teasing each other. They're joshing each other. And, and then they leave and go back into an environment that I would not want to be in myself. Yeah, yeah. But they... as, the judge, as the judge says, these kids don't need fixing. Their homes need fixing. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's true. So yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like the, it's like the hummingbird, you know, myth, you know, when the forest is on fire, the hummingbird takes a beak full of water and puts the fire out. Uh, and all the other animals are saying, well, what difference does that make? And the hummingbird says it's, that's the difference that I can make. Right. Right. Ah, oh, Kevin, you have so much heart. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a, I'm so happy to talk about this. I'm, Me I'm, too. Yeah. I'm so happy to be invited in, into your unbelievably important, humane, healthful project life-changing well thank you Thanks what for... you're doing is so beautiful and I, I i i i'm hoping that somehow we can bring some of what you do into our programming i mean the what you just described uh you know i i know we're we're living in a hybrid world now where people want to do things live and we end up doing a lot of things online. Like I, I wish I could have just driven over to your house and been next to you to make this video. <laughs> that, <laughs> but but um, uh, we've actually been doing experiential stuff online. And I, I wonder during COVID, was the program suspended? Did it keep going on? And what are you doing for if if you didn't do it for 2020 or 2021 are you going to do it live for 2022 yes we yes we're, the plan is to do it this spring i mean fingers crossed and it could change at any minute and you know there's a lot of really stupid things happening in the world that are so insanely counterproductive yeah uh but that's that's the plan we did it last last time as a uh, zoom thing but oh that was that was really tough and and our our goals and our um uh kind of our our what we were working towards the goals and and the way we worked was much uh it was it was much watered down it was much yeah. less yeah. ambitious this program is ambitious. Yes, I, I get it. And and so in any season, is it 20 kids who go through the program? Oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, it's between, uh, we've done it with as few as eight. We've done it with as many as uh, 20. And then we quickly stop doing that. So we do it between uh, 10, and 10 and 15. So this is a very special group. I mean, yeah, man, yeah. are they lucky that they get to go be with you. And we don't end with 15, but we start out with 15. And it's, it's, it's just too difficult for some. Yeah. I mean, yeah. As, as slowly as we move. And I, I want to, so the people that are working in the program are, I mean, they are, I would, for want of a better word, I would say they are our most evolved directors and teachers who, uh, you, you know, can survive that kind of resistance. Yeah. And, yeah. and they're also uh, really warm, really playful, uh, 
not just respectful because you know respect isn't isn't enough respect is respect doesn't heal the past respect yeah. just like helps you go forward better right, right. They, they come from a place of uh rapport uh -huh. and so how do you get rapport with someone well i would say in the way you look at them, the way you listen to them, the look on your face, the attention you pay to them is communicating an unspoken message, a subtle and unspoken message, which is, I'm really interested in you. I'm interested in what you think. I'm interested in what you're saying. What you say, I it makes a difference to me. I care about it. Yeah. It's, I mean, if you could condense that, but it's got to be unspoken. Otherwise it's like, you know, it's like creepy. <laughs> but the, un, the unspoken message is I like you. Yeah. I like you. I like you. Yeah. And again, this is water on their desert. What adult gives them this kind of attention and quality attention. Right, right. The rapport. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so about how many people would you say have gone through the program? How many years has it been? Oh, uh, 20? 20 years 20 years wow really i think i think it's been, <laughs> we, we have, maybe, maybe not maybe 15 to 20 years i i don't they all kind of blend to, yeah, <laughs> together yeah, but, in my brain and, and we have and, made we have made every mistake you because we were just making this up we we've made every mistake you could make and then we started variations on those mistakes but gradually we we discover things that work and gradually we improve the things that work because we're really interested in in it being a, a powerful effective program that is meaningful to them and how do you create that we're always curious and and ruminating about that and so is there any program to train the people who are the directors to, to seed them out to other places when they come and learn from you uh yes uh the the training period we have i mean we do well we do some week-long workshops for teachers and these are mostly high school teachers in a, in a classroom or drama teachers in a, in a yeah. school. And we do like a week long training where we'll focus on one play and we do many of these things. And, uh, oh, there's a bunch of activities I haven't talked about that are really crucial during the rehearsal period, the rehearsal day that we're doing that, that I didn't mention. So, but for our own directors, there is a, uh, there is a training period before in the fall, in the middle of September, where all 20 of the festival, fall festival directors, 10 high schools, 500 kids. There's a documentary about this. I, yeah, I want us to show that documentary if we just have come, permission. Well, we, we have to let it be a premiere at this uh, uh, film festival in September. And after it's premiered, then, then I have more freedom to release it. Oh, great. People. So I have to kind of keep a close hold on it. OK. Uh, okay. So before that festival, there's a, a week of intense training. But these are directors that have directed in the festival for 20 some years. So mm -hmm. it's only a week. It should be about three weeks. Yeah. But since it's returning directors uh, and, and again, a lot of new directors, like we're getting directors from Israel because we're going to start a fall festival or festival in Israel among uh, three schools this coming year. We just did two schools, then three, and then five. Um, 
yeah, that's the training period where we go through the whole operating system, the ethic, the aesthetic of what kind of theater we're creating and how this, this way of working is different than the professional theater model. <clears throat> like yeah. oftentimes in, in schools or, or in this project, you might think, well, you have to audition, you have to audition. And kids memorize lines and get up and do an audition and directors are sitting there with a screensaver face on. I mean, that's a terrible idea. So a lot of the profession, you, in schools, you want as many kids as you can to have an experience of this art form because it's so humane. It's so powerful. It, it is, it's life, life rattling, life changing, life healing. So why would you exclude kids? The, the whole notion of it, you know, like the exclusive drama club, it's like inane. It's madness. It's like have three Juliets, have five Hamlets, have as many kids working on this, have them. So we learned that kind of our model of what a director is, which is different than the professional model, which is, that's kind of all we know. That's what people's training was. Thank you so much. This is- Oh, been... it's my pleasure. Mine Thank you. Too. Thank you for asking me.